In this lesson, I'm going to go over the lighting recommendations I have. Once you start to get more involved with your YouTube channel or if you want to create sort of a studio setup, it's a great idea to invest in a lighting kit so that you can always be ready to film, no matter if it's dark outside or light outside. When you are getting started, I do recommend just using a bright open window, sitting next to that window, not in front of the window and face with the camera facing the window, but with the window facing you and the camera, all that light shining down on you so that you can have nice lighting. It's a great way to get started, but once you start to get a little more advanced, it's a great thing to actually purchase a lighting kit. Some things to consider when you are buying a kit, the number of lights that you that it comes with, uh, I definitely recommend getting at least two lights, three or even four lights is, is a good idea. I'll talk about why in a second. The type of light that you're purchasing, so there's lots of different video lights out there. We've got LED lights, fluorescent lights, incandescent lights. Most of the new lights coming out are LED, LED lights, and that's what I would recommend now because they don't use a lot of energy, they don't get hot, and those are two things that the other types like incandescent lights can, can actually get quite hot if you're using a light that's really powerful and can use more energy. Fluorescent lights are still pretty good, but I find that the LED panels are easier, smaller, and just as good nowadays. Uh, you definitely want to consider the power of the light source itself. So how bright do you need to, to get to have a well-lit scene? Uh, so this is determined in watts. And so I have a 500 watt LED panel shining down on me right now. There are light panels that are a lot higher wattage, a lot lower wattage. And that's just something to consider if you're going very budget. Uh, if you're just getting a light that, that has like 50 or 100 watts, it might not be bright enough, enough in some situations, but it could be a great way to get started. And then the size and portability. So if you are running and gunning, walking around, you might want a light kit that has lights that you can just quickly you know, carry in a backpack and set up, or maybe even a light that can even fit on the top of a camera. Uh, those are things to consider. Now let's look at some of the recommendations I have, but first I wanna talk about three-point lighting. Now I mentioned in a previous lesson, this is not a video production course. We're not gonna show you everything about how to create videos. We have a pr video production bootcamp course for you if you're interested in, but the basic uh, three-point lighting setup is important. I have an article on my website, videoschoolonline.com. If you're interested in, just head over to there, click video, and you can find this article or search for three-point lighting. And this comes up, so basically with three-point lighting, you have three lights. And this is a standard setup that you can use pretty much for anything, for talking head videos, documentary, even narrative. You have your main light, which is called the key light, and that's just usually next to the camera shining brightly on your subject. I have one key light shining on me right now. Then you have a fill light. So the fill light goes on the opposite side so that it fills in any shadows. Depending on how dramatic or stylistic you want your video to look, you might want more shadows on one side of the face or the other. And so right now I actually only have one key light. I don't have a fill light coming in over here, but I do have a window that if I opened up or set up my other light, I could get some fill in there so that it brightens up this side of my face if you want more of like that, that sort of flat look. Then you have the backlight. Now the backlight is important because it separates the subject from the background. This could either be like you see here in this, this image, it could be shining directly on the subject, which sometimes is very nice. It gives a nice sort of separation, a nice glow to the shoulder and to the head, which is good. Or what I do is I have my backlight shining up against the wall behind me. So if I turn this off, you can probably see the difference on, off. See how it creates sort of not only a stylistic vignette, but it also does add some separation in depth. It's kind of hard to see maybe in the small screen, but it adds some depth to the video. I find that just having a, just one light without any background light, it just doesn't look that good. And this is why having multiple lights is good. You might want a light that's actually shining on me as a backlight, like you see in this image, and one shining on the background like this, and a fill light. So you might need four lights for that. 
Of course, you can use other equipment, uh, and I would just recommend looking at this article. There's diffusion. You can use a bounce card or a bounce board if, if or a reflector. If you don't have three lights, you can use a bounce as a fill itself. You can even use a window, like I mentioned, as the fill light. So if I didn't, like I said, I can just use this window over here. All right, so definitely check that out if you're more interested in. Uh, now the lights that I use are called Draycast, or that's the brand. This is, um, if you search for Draycast LED light, you can see all kinds of different panels. You can put together your own um, kit that you want, or they do actually have kits pre-made. Pre the one that I have is the Draycast ENG plus four light kit. So it has four lights. Um, actually two are 100 watt equivalents. So it's uh, as bright as a normal 100 watt bulb. Um, and then a 500 and then a 200. And the 200 is great because it's all these can be battery powered and they um, can be strapped onto a camera or just run and gun. Uh, that's great. One other thing to consider with lighting, lighting is so confusing to beginners and I do recommend our video production bootcamp if you're really interested in learning all of this and the nitty gritty, but lights come in different temperatures, meaning some light is cooler, more blue, and some is warmer, more orangish. And you can probably imagine that when you think of like an old Edison style bulb, it's really yellow compared to something like an LED light or a fluorescent light that is actually more blue or cool. And so that's something to consider because if you're shooting outside, you'll want to have lights that are balanced to daylight, which is more of that LED style light. Or if you're shooting inside with other sort of natural light bulbs in the background from your house, you might need a more tungsten based light. Now I know this is very, very confusing. So I'm hopefully going to include some resources that help explain color temperature or just go over to YouTube and search for understanding color temperature so you can understand the, the actual temperature of lights so you know which ones you're getting. A lot of the LED lights either are by temperature, by color, so you can actually change them from one to the other, or like my kit, you can just put a little filter in it depending on if you wanna change the temperature. The other thing to note about this though is as long as you have your white balance set on your camera properly, it's going to look natural. You're not going to look like super orange or super blue no matter what lighting kit you're using. So a lot of things there. Draycast, a brand that I've purchased and I've loved since I purchased these lights. There are other brands out there, of course. Aperture is a, a brand that a lot of YouTubers are using. This Aperture C120D is a great kit. And then you put on something like this, this big dome filter that filters the light and it's nice, bright, soft light. That is, that is something that's really important too is when you're using these lights, you wanna make sure you have some sort of filtration so that it does make the light softer. That generally, generally looks better in video rather than some really harsh, harsh light without any filtration. Um, there's, like I said, there's all kinds of lighting kits out there. If you go to BH Photo Video and you go under their lighting section and then go to continuous lighting, you'll see all kinds of different lights. Let's go click on LED lights. And there are some that are, are, are cheaper, some more expensive. You can get little kits that are a couple hundred dollars and that might be something you consider just to get started. Uh, but remember, Draycast Aperture, those are two brands that I recommend recommend. Now, if this is too expensive and you want a really, really simple DIY setup, I would consider the paper lantern setup. This is from a blog article of mine. Um, it's got my setup that I used to have on my desk. So it has these, these paper lanterns. So it has, see how they're those just paper lantern bulbs. And then I had lights inside there. And it, again, it's that lantern that diffuses the light and it makes it super soft. I actually have a couple videos on my YouTube channel. So just go to the Phil Ebner YouTube channel and search for lighting or light kit um, or paper lantern and you'll see some examples of these lights and my setup using them. I don't use them anymore, but you can get started with one of these lights or two of these lights for like 20 or 30 bucks, just running down to your local hardware store and Ikea or Amazon to get the paper lanterns. All right, see you in the next lesson.